excited about today. As you all know, it's another Blank Canvas podcast day. And so I want to welcome you guys to today's Blank Canvas podcast session four. Yes! We're so excited. We're at number four, guys. God is really, really, really doing it for us. And I am so excited that you are staying tuned in, you are staying subscribed, and you are staying notified so that you do not miss these powerful, impactful, effective, life-changing podcasts. I, again, want to welcome you. I'm your host, Apostle Prophetess Kadesh, and my co-host, the amazing... Tanisha Bryan. Yes, guys. And we are so excited again about you being here with us today. Listen, we've been seeing a major move of God in these podcasts. We've been witnessing a life changing experience of what God has been allowing us to paint. Yeah. Seeing the masterpieces of these come together is so remarkable to me. And to be able to hear testimonies about what has taken place. Um, let me tell you, that mother's podcast has shifted so many mothers' terminology of what they name themselves. The testimonies that have been coming in on how, you know, no longer want to be named as the single mother. Yeah. No longer want to be that independent woman that feels like I got to do this by myself. The testimonies that have been rolling in to say, you know what? I'm not going to allow my experiences as a mother and a daughter being the daughter of my mom now doing what maybe have happened to me has shifted my mindset to change how I now mother my children. I love we're that. getting the testimonies yeah. coming in, guys. And so we're it. just excited about all that is taking place. Distorted view. Oh my God. Listen, it's, it's, it's some things that God is doing with these podcasts. And we yeah. know that God has something stirred up cooking for today. Are you ready? I'm ready. I'm ready to dive in and talk (laughs) about what we're going to talk about today. Listen, if you have not shared, make sure you are sowing your seed of sharing, guys, because we want to make sure that we get more people knowing that this blank canvas podcast is painting God pictures and you are able to see how God sees it. So yeah. make sure you are sharing. If you are newly watching, welcome. We welcome you. Make sure you subscribe so you get all the notifications. Hit that notification bell so you do not miss when they are premiering live on every other Tuesday at 5, 12 p.m. Guys, you yeah. do not want to miss them nope. because I'm telling you, it is life-changing canvases. That you will be able to now paint what God wants you to paint for your life and for your destiny and for your purpose. God wants to see us as the masterpiece that he has called and created us all to be. But we've got to make sure that we are that blank canvas that he can do it. So let's position ourselves. So don't miss it again. Click the subscribe button and that notification bell so that you are able to get all the notifications. And don't forget, share this podcast. So let's dive on in, guys. I am so excited about this topic today. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, because if I can be honest, the topic that we're going to talk about today is really spreading widely. Yeah. All over the world, there are so many people that deal with this word. And this word is called unbelief. Today's podcast topic is unbelief pandemic. Huh, (laughs) honey. Unbelief pandemic. Because there is a pandemic of unbelief that is widely spreading throughout the world. The enemy is tricking people to stop believing in God. The enemy is tricking people to stop believing overall in what they know they can have, in what they know they can see, in what they know they can do. The enemy is stagnating people with unbelief. And we are here to paint a picture of what unbelief look like, 
yeah. and what true belief looks like so that you will not get caught up in the pandemic. You won't get caught up in this widespread virus that is trying to take the people's faith out, that is trying to take people's belief out. Oh, we're diving into it today. So again, make sure you're sharing. So let's dive in, Tanisha. Okay. We are going to talk about it today, but you know how we do. We've got to break down the what the term is and it right. unbelief pandemic today. Let's talk about it. What do you feel unbelief means? Well, you know, of course we looked it up, but when I think, when before I looked it up, I think of unbelief as not being able to trust because that's good. That's good. if I truly have belief, then that means I trust what's been said right. by God, what he says. But when I, I broke it down to un first, yeah. so un means not opposite of contrary to. So I had to look up contrary because yeah. that's not a common word. Right. Um, and it's either of two terms that cannot be affirmed of the same subject. Ooh, that is so good. That is so good. So it's literally two opposing things. See? That's before the belief. See? Do you see that? Yeah. How un is contrary to believe. Right. So the two words coming together creates a whole new word that never was supposed to be created. Right. Because belief is what we're supposed to always operate in. And it's crazy how the enemy preys on those that have a belief. He preys on those that literally believe. You said the word belief means that trust, yeah. being able to trust, being able to believe, being able to have that confidence and it's an unwavering confidence. But when That's you put good. un in the front of it, now I waver. Yeah. Yeah. Now I don't believe. Now I'm in a position in a place where I'm not as confident as, as, as I say I am. I don't Ooh, really see what I say I see. Uh-oh. Because let's be real. <laughs> let's be real. We say a lot. I believe. I believe. But then our actions come contrary yeah. to what we actually say. And then we are no longer believers, but unbelievers. Right. What you want to say? Go ahead. Can I, I mess you, you? Can I mess you up a little bit? Oh, girl. Okay. Ahead, so, of course, ahead. he gave me a scripture to go with contrary, right? Ah. So, he gave me Luke 5, 36 through 39. Uh-uh. And it says, and he spoke also a parable unto him. No man putteth a piece of a new garment unto an old. If otherwise, then both the new maketh a rent, which means tear, tear, and the piece that was taken out of the new agreeeth not with oh, the old. Oh. And no man putteth new wine into old bottles, else the new wine will burst the bottles and be spilled, and the bottles shall perish. Now, bottles are a vessel. Come on. So if I put the old into the new vessel that God has made me. That part. Right? Then it's going to perish. So if I put un into my belief, oh. then I'll perish. Girl, hush. Not you preaching. <laughs> not you preaching. Not you preaching. Not not if I put un. Say it again. <laughs> if I put un into the belief, right? Uh -huh. Into the vessel. Because uh -huh. my vessel is belief. Uh -huh. I believe, right? Mm -hmm. Then I'll perish. Not you trying to die out here. Not you are trying to die out here. Because we know perish means to die. Correct. We know perish means to die. Not you trying to die out here. Stop putting un in your belief. Stop putting un in your belief. Come on. You're putting un in your belief and it causes you to perish. Did you not hear what she says? Because it's contrary to what the word actually says. Right. So now you are making your vessel perish. You're making everything that God wants to live die. You Jesus. have to make yeah. sure that you are not setting yourself up for failure. You are not yeah. setting yourself up to die. You are not setting yours, your, your belief, your, your purpose, your visions, your goals. All of this plays a part into the vessel now because all of the gifts, all of the visions, everything is in the vessel. Right. So if you're putting on in your belief into your vessel, you are killing everything that God wants to live. You are killing yourself from the inside out. Man, this is so good already. This is so good. This is so good already. This is so good. So I also had unbelief and I, I looked it up. 
I broke it down into unto like you, child. We don't want a court. We don't want a court. But I also got the full word unbelief, and it is the state or quality of skepticism. The state or quality of skepticism. So you know I had to look up skepticism because of course, of course yeah, yeah, they ain't no normal yeah, word. It, yeah. Everybody just be out here be like, oh, gotta I'm look skeptic. it up, right? Right. right. Skeptic. You, you know, you know. So I looked it up, and it means questioning. Who God? Oh. Oh, who are you questioning? Oh, okay. It means questioning. Mm. So when I have an unbelief, I'm skeptical about God. When I have an unbelief, Jesus. I'm questioning. How many people can raise their hand? Raise your hand in the comment section. Raise, raise your hand. Me, me. I do that. I question God a lot. I do. God, you sure? God, you want me to do that? God, 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 you, God, you sure? God, like, why, why you gotta ask God if you're sure? If you heard him, then why are you saying, God, are you sure? If he tell you to do a thing, why are you asking God, if, I'm, are you sure? Are you sure, God? You choose me, God, me, God, you know, I don't know, God. You know, how many people do that? Oh, you looking crazy like I did. Oh, see, uh -huh. there you go, the prophet, and uh, then tap in, and tap into the prophet, and tap into the prophet. Cause I mean, mm -hmm. we gotta be real. This is what the enemy's duty is yep. to make us question our creator. How are you gonna question the creator? Of you that tell you to do what he wants you to do, and you know he's your creator, but you question him when he tell you to do what he wants you to do because that's what he created you to do. You sure? That's unbelief. The reason why you question is because you really don't believe. I literally got the picture of when you go to art class. Uh -oh. You got the canvas, right? Come on, let's fake the and picture. And so the teacher comes in, the creator comes in. And it's teaching you how to paint on the canvas. Oh. But you're like, are you sure? Now they've done it. They know. They, they got the experience. Honey. But however, you're sitting there questioning them. I mean, I had to raise my hand because let's be honest. We talked about this in the distorted view about false humility. And there has to come to a point where I, I know I'm chosen and saying I know I'm chosen Ooh. is not offensive Ooh. to who made me because I'm giving Ooh. honor to him. Yeah, see, that's powerful. It's not offensive to the one who created me. And the reason why we operate in false humility is because we're always trying to please people. Oh. And we're not trying to please him. Mm. We're not doing it according to him. Right. We're doing it according to people. So false humility sets in because of the fact that we're trying to be humble for people. But Paul said it in the word. Am I now trying to appease the people? Am you I sure now did. trying to please people? I don't please people. It's not a fit. You said that that thing is so powerful. When I operate as who I am and not worry about that, I'm pleasing the one who wants to be pleased. But when I try to do it in another direction or another way, guess what? I begin to operate in that false humility yeah. because now people are involved. People are involved. The next thing that we got to shift and change is trying to operate according to people. You were not created to operate according to people. You were created to operate according to God. Yeah. And God will then allow the people who will understand your creation and who you are to accept who you are without compromising, without trying to please, without trying to operate in false humility. Honey. I know we were talking about unbelief, but what God was telling me when we were about unbelief is my, for my, I'm talking for myself. So nobody feels like I'm talking about them, but I might be the foundation of my belief has to be <laughs> might drop. We won't drop these though. <laughs> the foundation of my belief has to be in God because we know that keyword foundation because we are in a place where it's instant access. So if my belief is not in God, then I can go and get discouraged off my phone. I can go and get discouraged off my bank account. Baby. I can go and get discouraged. And so then I think, oh, God didn't call me to that. God didn't choose Come me for on, that. Come on, ma'am. But here's the thing. If I am chosen, nobody can take that from me. Yeah. And so you're, you're warring, you're going back and forth. It's really with you. It's not with the enemy. Because you're telling God, you somebody. you're telling God, Please listen. I'm not chosen, but he says you are chosen. Yeah. And it's literally going to take us, you know, to the scripture we're going to discuss. But at this point, 
He's already said you're chosen. He's already said that it's your time. No, it may not look like your expectations. See, when your Ooh. beliefs are in your expectations Ooh. and not in your purpose and your Honey. Jeremiah 29 and 11, you then you are going to get unbelief. You want to sit there boohoo crying to God, thinking you did wrong. And it's not about humility. It's because you literally fail because your expectations is where you put your faith. Ooh, that's why your expectations have to be based according to the word of God. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You said something key. You said the foundation. The foundation. If you have established a foundation off of the word of God, you already have placed who you are in God. And so you would not have to worry about your expectations your expectations being placed in your belief because now your expectations line up with the word of God and what the word of God does it helps you see yourself the way God sees you so when you know the word and your foundation is the word your expectations that you are looking to receive is the word because you get word results when you have a foundation word of the results. word you now get what the word says. And so that's why it is imperative that you never expect. This goes back to when we were talking about the mothers, how people get spiritual parents or get spiritual mothers. And because they didn't have their real parents in their lives, guess what they do? They put an obligation or a false expectation on what a spiritual mother is, right? What a spiritual parent is supposed to be. And when they don't get what they feel they're supposed to get out of that, they then turn and operate in rejection or operate in these different types of spirits that they were never to operate in is because they never gave themselves an expectation according to the word of the Lord, according to their life and how God has created them. And this is what kills people belief system yeah. because their own expectations. Let me tell you where expectations come from out of your heart yeah because it's your heart's desire and expectation is what your heart desire and so if your heart's desire is God's desire for you you would never desire anything outside of what God already wants for you so your expectation will be God wow I expect God I expect God I expect God I expect God and if we know who God is he's everything Everything. All things. He's healer. He's deliverer. He's way maker. He's promise keeper. Come on. Can we sing the song? Oh. Light in the darkness. She's going to sing by herself. My today, God. Folks. That <laughs> is who he is. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like when we get to that place, we will not have our expectations, our expectations in our belief system, but God's expectations that he has for us because the Bible says, Jeremiah 29 and 11, for he knows the thought that he think towards us. Yeah. Those thoughts are not to harm us, but to give us hope and an expected end. God has an expectation for us. So if our expectation is God's expectation, right. then our end would be the end that he saw for us before our beginning. And that what the word said, yeah. in, before our beginning. And then we would put our, his expectation of what he has for us in our, in our belief in yeah. our heart right and we will see what we didn't believe right because now it's all gone right and so we talked about how they put the belief in the expectation uh -oh. but i got i got one more word for you and then and then we could go into what we talked about you, you ready i like this Come okay on. so it said we think we are just believing what god said when in fact we have it rooted in the evidence that was never connected to the manifestation of the promise in the first place. Honey, 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 honey. Read it again. Somebody got to hit it. We again. think we are just believing what God said when in fact we have it rooted in the evidence that was never connected to the manifestation of the promise in the first place. And I have to go back because I was supposed to say this. We know because we are in a place where it's instant access, our belief can be based on people, promotions, Provision and proposals. <laughs> okay, I'm back. Because let me tell you something. It was all the P words for me. It was all the P words for me. Because we just were saying that. False humility comes with trying to please people. Yeah. 
I forgot it was there. The expectations <laughs> that we want for ourselves yep. causes us to be in an unbelief place. Correct. Because it doesn't line up with God. What we want our evidence to be, come on now, what we want our right. evidence to be, because our expectation is what we want our evidence right. to be. When it doesn't line up like that, you said something so key. When the evidence is something that was never supposed to be. When right. that evidence that we now supposed to, we want to see. But what does the Bible say? And this is how the enemy tricks, because now it perverts the word of God. Correct. Because the Bible says in Hebrews 11 and 1, what? Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and right. the evidence right. of things not seen. Yes. So now... The perverting comes into and brings an unbelief is because we know faith is the evidence. But when we have an evidence that we want to see and that we have an expectation of what our evidence is supposed to be and we don't get that evidence, then we think God is not real or we stop believing in God because now we didn't see what we wanted to see when in all actuality, right. it was never what God had for you. That. That part right there. You, you're just going to drop the mic like that. Like, I, like that's right. not what God had for you. But here's the thing. Guess how we got there? Ooh. Guess how we think? Because we're running after a prophecy and we're not running after God. Because if I'm running after God, everything that he said will come to pass. So my belief is I'm going to see it like this. Honey. Because so-and-so done talk to me. Oh, Honey. so-and-so done talk to me. But I'm running after it. We say the bag, but in our, you know, in our kingdom that people run after prophecies. Ooh. And so they're running after this thing that they know that someone said, but that's not what God said. And maybe God did say it, but it's not the time. Or maybe he had See, to shift there you go. because some people are off their rotor. And so they're not in the right way. So he has to shift you so you can get to those people. But are you willing to let go of the prophecy you're running after to run after God? Because when you run after God, somebody say Matthew 6 and 33. Uh-huh. Write it down in the comment section. Matthew 6 and 33 says, if you seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all other things will be added. Oh. So you never have to run after prophecy. Correct. The prophecy will be added when you run after God. When you seek him first, when you do what you're supposed to do, all of that is added. You never have to get caught up in trying to chase what someone said right. when you know God has already said. Come on. We've got to change the way we operate and how we do things. And this is why the pandemic is a widespread. The pandemic is out there of unbelief is because people have so many expectations and they operate off of their own flesh. But today we're painting another picture. When we get finished with this podcast today through the spirit of God, you will not operate in unbelief. You're taking yeah. the un out of your belief. Yeah. You're taking the un out of your belief. So let's dive on in. Let's talk okay. about this word. Pandemic. Mighty God. Mighty God. We might not Mighty get, God. We might get there. Um, my, mighty Lord God. Jesus. Mighty God. This might be a part two. <laughs> I was I just know. thinking the same. This thing. might be a part two. We, we might be going to have a part two <laughs> yeah. of this one. The other part. Yeah. 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 Let's go. Pandemic. <laughs> what you got? What you got? Uh, you know. About, what, what, you, what, what you got? Come okay. On. So when I think of pandemic, of course, we all know we went through a pandemic. And let me tell you what I saw during the pandemic. Ooh. I saw people that never bought bulk toilet paper in their life buy bulk toilet paper. Huh. I saw people that literally, I know people now that still haven't bounced back. They still don't like to leave their house yeah. because yeah. of the fear of getting sick. Key. The fear of not having enough toilet paper. Not having enough um, food, the things that people were really worried about. Yeah. But you know what I don't see? People washing their hands like they used to. Oh, you know that died out, honey. That, the sanitizer. Let me tell you something. That died out. Purity died out. Right. And they don't understand that the whole purpose of that pandemic was to bring back purity. Wow. See, they were too busy caught up into the natural purity that God was trying to purify. Yeah. The earth of all of what had taken place. And so many people have gotten away from the purity. This is what's happening. You you know what else we're seeing again now? Because everybody was running to Jesus. Let's just be real. Ooh, yeah, everybody right. was running to yeah. Jesus when the pandemic hit. Everybody wanted God. Everybody who didn't do God wanted God. Everybody who never said the word Jesus said Jesus. And now what are we seeing? People not doing Jesus. No, the People has changed. Yeah. Exactly. They've changed. Because they got what they wanted oh. from calling on Jesus during the pandemic. 
Because a lot of people, let's be honest, they got their platforms built during the pandemic. They got their provisions. They got popularity. If we're just going to stay with the peas today. Uh, you got okay. It. So now God's like, come back, let it go. But I have unbelief because I know what lack looks like. I'm so scared to be in lack once again Ooh. that I won't let go of the things. And that's the pandemic. Uh, the fear of not having enough. That's what that did as well. We exactly. were supposed to get pure, but that fear of not having enough, the anxiety of being close Come to on. someone, the depression Come of on. not being able to, you know, see your loved ones again, all that got piled, piled Wait, up. Yeah. And so it spread worldwide because if you look up pandemic, it talks geographically. Yes. Yes. Geographically. Yes. That's the, di that's the difference. So yeah. it literally spread like, over the whole it's a world. Widespread. You still have people that wear masks outside because they have the fear. And, you have people that will not even right. get near you um, because, you know, the fear is literally, we talk about unbelief being a pandemic but you and do fear know, is literally the root. It, and, but you do know that a pandemic is a disease. Mm -hmm. And if you break up the word disease, it's dis-ease. Mm. So it brings about an uneasiness. It's no longer ease. It's an uneasiness now that has set into the people's belief system. Their belief system is crumbling. Their belief system, this is what this pandemic, an uh, uh, unbelief pandemic is. It's a dis-ease. It's a dis-ease. And when you look up the word pandemic, it is a widespread epidemic, which is, which is a disease, that it uh, is affecting a large part of the population. Large. A large part of the population. So yeah. now we're dealing with where it's really starting from the church. Oh, the church. If we don't have a believing church, what do you think the people in the world who's supposed to be in the church are going to do? They're not going to believe if we are so faulty and fragile and and fighting and, and fickle yeah. with our belief and our faith. Who are we drawing to Christ? He says, if he be lifted up, all men will be drawn unto them, unto him. But the fact of the matter is, who's lifting him up? The Bible says the only way to have faith in him is if you've got to believe. And without faith, it's impossible to please, please him. him. So how are you going to lift him up if you don't even believe in him? Nobody's going to believe your God if you do not believe in your God. Nobody's Jesus, going to believe yeah. how you believe if you don't believe how you're supposed to believe. And now what's happening is when you have fear, when you have anxiety, right. when you have depression, when you have all these different things that's going on, guess what you're doing? You're spreading it to it's your contagious. children. You're spreading. Yeah. That's what it's a contagious. pandemic is. You're spreading it. An epidemic is contagious. This disease is contagious. Now your house. Your children watch you. Yeah. They, 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 they watch how you operate when a bill needs to be paid. You about to pass out. You don't know what you're getting ready to do. They watch how you act when you don't have money. You, you about to go crazy. You in attitudes. You, 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 you can't talk right. You can't do nothing right because you don't have or you, cause we went there. You said that it was a, a lack thing, not having enough. Yep. And this is what happens to people because they don't believe. They don't believe. And God is like, let's break this pandemic of unbelief. We got to break it. Because it's causing people to run away from God. It's causing people to not believe in God like they should. We've got to destroy the pandemic. Wow. But in order to destroy the pandemic, we have to believe. So we have to believe that we're chosen. We have to believe that we hear God telling us to go Ooh. start a food truck. We have to go believe that we heard God saying, you need to drop everything and change your whole thing. Yes. Here's the thing. Belief, I think we talked about the evidence and the pandemic of fear is the fear of people. Because we put everything out there. We put everything on social media. So we don't put the new thing out there. We don't put the whatever God has told us to do. And then God says, no. And you're like, no, that can't be right. Because he told me this. I mean, and if we go back to the prophecy, some of my prophesied over that thing. But here's the thing. We have to be so in tune with God. 
because we're getting in the way of the people that you called, the people that you called and said, you know, the people you called out. Wow. See, it, it, you know, someone a Sunday talked about the Roman officer. He wow. was not a man of faith. <laughs> He was not a man of faith. And that's the thing. How can people, because let's be real, in the body of Christ now, we, we get this pandemic of unbelief. How is it that it's always the outsiders that get what God has for us? Suddenly. They work the systems. Yep. They work the word. They use it for their own earthly gain, but there's a production behind it. Hmm. Let's be real. Sound like faith. You gotta works. beat the church up to pay their tithes and offer. Yeah. But the world pay their tithes and offer. How? They give ten percent to organization. They do. They always sowing. These are the principles of the word of God now. But it's the body of Christ that don't believe in it. It's the body of Christ that you gotta pull teeth. I'm talking about pull the strands off of your head almost to get you to do what the word says to do. And it's like, why do we have to do this in the body of Christ when the world gets the principles and work it? This is like Jezebel. Uh oh. Jezebel. Oh, in the notes. <laughs> <laughs> Jezebel literally was like, yo, I'm about to get this vineyard. I don't care how I got to get it. Right. I'm getting this vineyard. Determined. I don't even pray. Let's be real. I don't even pray. I'm a witch. How many witches out there, you know, out here doing stuff and y'all follow? Uh-oh. Fake prophets and you're following them. You believe what they say. But then when someone who's operating in the spirit of God, operating in the power of God for real, tell you what God say and you question and you this and you that. Here comes Jezebel. I'm putting the whole city the whole city on a fast. <laughs> we got That's some right. of them doing that now. I'm going to put the whole city on a fast. And we're going to pray. And we're going to make sure I get the vineyard. Now, we're going to make sure I get the vineyard. Come on. I get the vineyard. I'm going to siphon your belief so that I can get what I want. Thank you. Because you know they have believers out there. And that's the, that's the thing. A, but we all are believers. Right. But what, what do we believe, believe in? in? Yeah, yeah. This is where the unbelief sets in. We might as well go to the scripture now. We might as well go to the scripture. Okay, okay. Because where th th this is where the unbelief set in. Because we're all believers. Yeah. When we grew up, when, when we born, and we get to the place where we start being able to talk, and mama and dad, dad, yeah. and all kind of stuff. You know, we believe. We, 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 we believe. Because when mama tell us the stove is hot, and she, I, that's hot. Guess what we start believing? It's we hot. believe it's hot. Even if it's not on. You know, we, we believe it's hot. And, and let's be real. Some of the crazy kids out there, they still got to touch it. I believe what she say, but I just want to see for real. Why some of y'all can't do that? Oh. God said, your blessing is on the other side. I believe you, God. But, but you nobody don't ever do nothing. You ain't moving. Some of y'all should get like the kids. I hear you say it's hot. But I just want to see if it's hot, God. I'm going to step in it and see if it's hot. God is saying, oh, the waters are trouble. The waters are troubled. You can get what you need in the yeah, waters. Yeah, the waters yeah, are yeah, troubled. Yeah. The waters are ready for you to jump in and get your healing. Yes, the water Lord. is ready. God, I believe you. I see it. Well, jump in. Pick up your bed. Jump in. Jesus. This is what God is saying. Be like the child that hear the mama say it's hot. I believe it's hot, but I just want to touch it. From, touch it and see. But we're too afraid to touch it. But we believe. But what do we believe in? Mark chapter 9. Let's go there. This thing okay. is getting good to me. Lord Jesus. Mark chapter 9. And we're going to read verse 24. We're going to read verse 24 first. And we're, we're, we're going to break it down. We're going to go all through it. But we're going to read verse 24 first. Mark chapter 9, verse 24. Make sure you're sharing this, guys. And the verse says, the father instantly cried out. I do believe, there we go, but help me overcome my unbelief. I do believe, right, but help me overcome my unbelief. I do believe, but help me overcome my unbelief. Now, let's talk about 
this particular passage of scripture overall because we know we are diving into this one scripture but mm. when you go back and you look at this beginning at verse 14 i think it is yes verse 14 uh -huh. it literally says that when they came the disciples right here is where jesus is leaving another scene yes and jesus is going back over with the disciples right. that he left behind and he's on his way crossing over to the other side. And it says, when he gets over to the other disciples, it says there's a crowd of people arguing with the, the scribes. So there's a crowd of people. The disciples are arguing with scribes. That part. They're arguing with <laughs> scribes. You walk with Jesus and you arguing with somebody that's religious. Pharisees. You're, right. you're over here arguing. And it says, as they are now arguing... It says Jesus walks up and says, yo, what's going on? You know what I'm saying? She's like, yo, what, what, what's the deal? What's going on right now? What and it says a man out of the crowd who was the father of this son. Yeah. He says, I brought my son to the disciples for them to heal. Well, he said, I brought my son for you to heal. Yeah. But you were not here. So I oh. asked your disciples to heal him. Let's, let's, let's make sure we're telling it right now. He says, I brought my son for you to heal, but I asked your disciples because you were not here. They could not heal him. So can you heal him? The Bible says that Jesus looks at the father and says, how long has he been going through this? Right. See, y'all got to understand why Jesus be doing this type of stuff. I want to know how long he was doing this. The father says since he was a little boy. Right, so he's older. So he's older yeah. since he's a little boy. So then the father says, can you heal him? Jesus is like, who are you talking to? <laughs> Jesus is like, who are you talking to? Hold up, hold up. Stop the press. <laughs> Breaks, pause. Jesus is like, who are you talking to right, right at this moment? Like, who are you talking to? Jesus is like, can I? Are you asking me? Can I? No, literally. The scripture said, Jesus said, right. can, can I? I? So right here and there, you, you don't believe. What? Right. You just pointed out unbelief. Right. Because you questioning what does unbelief mean? Like it's skepticism. I'm skeptical. Yeah. I'm questioning. He questioned Jesus. So Jesus is like, okay, then there must be some unbelief. So Jesus asked him the question, do you believe? Right after he asked Jesus, can you? Jesus like, can I? Do you believe? Father says, I do believe. Right. But help my unbelief. What do you mean? Because if you believe, then there, there should be, should no, be no unbelief. Mind. So with this being said, why do you feel that people can believe but still have unbelief? Okay, so let's run it back, right? So Ooh, I like this it. Run it back, kid, girl. Run it back. Run this it back. kid has been dealing this for years upon years upon okay. years. Come on, we, we go his appointed time ah. to be healed See? was when Jesus was on the scene. Oh, okay. Like, literally, as that child was going through, God, not yet, not yet, not yet. So, over that time, what was, the, what was the father doing? Oh, okay. He was looking at the situation, the evidence of not being healed. So, his belief turned to He's not going to get healed. He got unhealed. Worse than that, the people that represented Jesus uh, couldn't heal uh, him. Oh, uh, you preaching. Because they didn't believe preaching. in the power that they had because Jesus wasn't there. Uh, they didn't realize. Uh oh, hold on. Stop right there. Because Jesus wasn't where? He wasn't there. Uh-huh. And so if you go back and read in the scripture, <laughs> a passage of scripture, it said Jesus told the disciples, how much longer I got to be with y'all? Right. How much longer do I have to be with you? Literally in the same passage, he says, how much longer do I have to be with you? Because I'm sick of y'all. Because I'm tired of this. I'm tired of this. Y'all looking for me 
to do what I've already given you the power to do. Right. And this is where the unbelief sets in. Key. Yeah. Because they will not operate in what he has given them the power to do. Correct. And so here we have, like you said, a father that has looked at the evidence of not being done. He yes. has looked at the evidence of a still sick son. He has looked at the evidence of I brought my son to you, but I thought with them being with you and connected, being connected to you, yeah, that's that, the word. That, that's that the word. they would be able to do right. what you could do. Oh right. my God. Right. They would be able to do it, but they couldn't do it. So is this why the Pharisees started arguing with the disciples? Right. Because you're looking at what you really don't like anyway, because you don't like Jesus. Correct. And you know, this is Jesus connection. And now Jesus is not there, but y'all are here and y'all are trying to perform a miracle that you cannot do. So it caused Jesus now to look bad. Uh oh. How many of us make God look bad? How many of us make God look bad? When we're not operating in the power that he actually gave us. Right. How many of us make God look bad when we say we, we serve God? We're connected to God. We do God. We live for God. But then we don't have God results. We, but, but, but then we don't see the manifestation of God in our life. But then we still struggle over and 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 over. And we are not seeing what God said over our life. It's because of the fact that do we really carry what God said we're supposed to carry? Okay, so I got I got to point this out because Jesus left them there. Uh -huh. Jesus knows all that's going to happen. So he knew the father would be there. Uh -huh. He knew the son would be there. He left them because he trusted that they would be able to handle the situation because a parent doesn't leave you at home alone if you can't handle the house. See? The parent be like, nah, come with me. We'll go run these errands together. See? Nah, come, come with me. Uh-uh. You come on the trip too. Even though you know they, they, they old enough. Even though you know that you've taught them. If you can't trust them, you don't leave them. But Jesus, it says Jesus came back to the yeah. disciples. He left. Yeah. He knew the situation would be at hand. That's why he's like, at this point, he's like, how much longer do I have to be with you? Why? Why do we have to keep going through the same thing over and over and over? Why do I have to always try to handle the situation? Why can't y'all handle this situation? You were chosen to handle the situation. That part. And this is where unbelief set in. When people who believe don't get Jesus results. This is where the unbelief sets in. When I don't get Jesus results, the father brought the son to Jesus to get Jesus results. If he was bringing the son to Jesus to get Jesus results, it's because he already heard what Jesus could do. He already heard what Jesus could do. And believe what he heard. Okay, okay. He so it says, on, the Bible faith says, by hearing, right? faith come come by, by hearing. hearing. Also, it says that work, faith without works is dead, right? Uh -huh. So we see works as, oh, I'm, I'm making this, I'm doing this. No, he took a step. He went to where he thought Jesus would he be. He worked, he worked. Walking was work for him. Because I can't imagine having Ooh. to bring a kid I was about that's say, carrying, that, that, that carrying, shaking. Because that, uh, this son was mute. Yep. He could not speak. Yes. It said that this these seizures, convulsions, he was sh like shook, stuck, couldn't move. And the father said he kept doing this over and over and over. Over and over. And he carried him. And he wasn't a kid. He was a, he was older. Because the father said since he was a little boy. Right. So he was an older boy. So imagine working yeah. that faith to carry him to Jesus. And you get there. Jesus is not there. But the Jesus that's supposed to be in the earth, the connection to Jesus was there. So that means the power of Jesus should have been there. Right. But the power of Jesus wasn't there. So imagine you hearing about him, you bringing him. And I know he I, he said, I as your disciples. Right. So he knew they were Jesus' disciples. Right. He knew who was with Jesus. Because they looked like Jesus. But y'all couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. So now I'm 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 not believing. Okay, so I'm gonna bring something to you because this is the this is the pandemic of unbelief. Uh oh. The man had enough. Uh oh. Like I'm waiting for Jesus. Spread but it. say someone from the crowd spread it. Saw that the disciples who spend all their time with Jesus uh -huh. couldn't heal him, mm -hmm. so they went home. Now they done ran and told that. And now they don't believe. 
And, and now they spread in the uh-huh. unbelief uh-huh. because one, they left before Ooh. the miracle happened. Ooh. And two, because there it was based on sight. See? Evidence. Now you're telling how it spreads. Now you're telling how the pandemic starts. And just imagine, this is one of the reasons why the crowd, now you got to think about it, the onlookers, because the Bible says there were onlookers. The crowd is now watching controversy. Right. Arguing. Fighting. Over. That's what's happening now. The son not being yeah. healed. The son not being delivered. We're watching now. We're now watching the, 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 the argument of what should have been healing never was healing. Now we've got confusion. Ain't that how the devil works? Okay. The devil works and brings confusion. Because he's going to be in someone's ear. Remember that time when the disciples couldn't heal that boy? Why you think he going to heal you? Why you think he's going to give you a provision? Come on. Because the pandemic, we can easily spread the pandemic of unbelief because we have the internet. We have social media. Uh-oh. So we don't even have to be onlookers in the physical. Oh. We're literally spreading the pandemic of unbelief through the airwaves. The spread through the, through the scroll. Because oh, oh, that's the I'm, word. I'm putting down the somebody. The spread through the hmm. scroll. The wrong scroll. You eating the wrong scroll. See? The spread yeah. through the scroll. Yeah. This pandemic is spreading through the scroll. As you're scrolling, as you're scrolling up your news feed, you're eating. You're eating unbelief. Jesus. You're eating unbelief. Every time you scroll your news feed, you're eating unbelief. The lies, the deceit that God isn't a healer. God Jesus. is not a way maker. God is a, you, you're, you're, you're scrolling through what doesn't have God in it. And so it causes you to now carry what you read to somebody else. Then somebody else passed what they what they got from you, and then they pass it what they got from them, and it just keeps spreading on and on and on. And now the unbelief has set. And now the work that God has to do to break it. So instead of being a glory carrier, you're an unbelief carrier. Because in the you know medical world, they call them carriers. When you have a disease, you're a carrier, carrier because you pass it to someone else. So we are known as glory carriers. But instead of carrying the glory, which my, if I carry the glory and you have unbelief, the glory should outshine the unbelief Ooh. because it says that light lights up the darkness oh, and on. unbelief is dark. Okay. So if you have unbelief and I'm carrying the glory, then I should overshadow the unbelief with the spirit that dwells within me. Yeah. I may not even have to say anything. I might just stand by you. Yeah. And now this, the light comes down Come on. and you believe mm. because you, God told you something. I told, um, said this to a kid on Sunday. I said, you never know what God said to somebody in their secret time. They have man said that this person, um, someone's going to come talk to you because God will talk to you like that. He'll say, this person's going to come to you, da, da, da. And they see that person, but you're not where you're supposed to be. Yeah. Or you don't believe that you heard him to go that way. So they don't see that person. And now they're, they're lost. Wow. We have to ask for repentance for the lost ones that we don't even know that we lost. Because we done spread the pandemic. Because we done spread the spread we, the pandemic. We with a share. With a like. Yeah. With a follow. Yeah. Yeah. And this is what took place. Uh unbelief set into the father. Because the father's initial walk was a belief walk. Jesus. His initial walking. For his son was a belief walk. It was when he got there and the disciples could not do it was when the unbelief set in. Because you've got to think about it. Unbelief, it says, is the state or quality. A state or quality is an actual position. The state or quality is a position. It's a position now. So you got to think about it. The state or quality, the father was put in a position because unbelief is the state or quality of skepticism, right. questioning. So now the father came believing, but when he got there was when he began to question because the first thing he said to Jesus after telling him what he wanted him to do, he says, if you can. If you can. He was now in a position of unbelief. When he came, he was in the state of believing. 
But what changed him was when the disciples could not do it. Who are you connected to that will make people not believe? Jesus. Who are you connected to that will make you not believe? Ooh. Who are you connected to that you've got this whole belief system? Lord, I believe, I believe, I believe because this is real. Our connections are important. I believe God. I believe God. Jesus, a believer. Jesus knowing all power. Jesus knowing how to operate. But then having people that surround him. But can I be real with you? Of course. These were the disciples that he always left behind. Oh, out. Because he had Peter, James, and John with him when he came back. So he already so, knew. So let's think about who. Yeah. Now, 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 listen, 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 uh -oh. listen. Uh -oh. This is revelation. Uh oh. Who was amongst those? Judas. Thomas. Thomas. Doubting Thomas. Yeah. Unbelieving Thomas. Thomas was the one. That wouldn't believe. Wasn't Thomas the one that Jesus had to go and show? Show. The nails in the hand. Even after. The holes in the feet. It, it, th this was after. So yeah. if Jesus was gone with Peter, James, and John, and he comes back on the scene, and the disciples who he left was Judas. Yeah. Thomas, the unbeliever. Yeah. Who you think they're going to heal? Nobody. So your connections matter. Because you don't even who hear about Who are you them. connected to Jesus. that will cause you to have unbelief? And who are you connected to that you could actually be a believer, but you are assigned to help people believe, but when you leave the room, ooh, when you leave the room, there are people that you are connected to that change the word that you got. That come and try to snatch the word from you. That come and try to make you question and doubt whether or not you were worthy for that word. Whether or not that, that God, you sure you want to do that with me? That's where this comes in. Because of your connections, you have to be careful. The argument came because Jesus had unbelievers around him in his circle. Yeah. And this is why he said, how much longer I have to be with you? Then what I love was after they got away Jesus heals the boy and they go off in a room. They want to ask a question. Why we couldn't deliver? Why we couldn't cast out that demon? Because these kind can only come out through fasting, fasting and praying. Pain, which results in killing your flesh. Uh-huh. You got it. So, you know, later it says, you know, they fast because you'll fast once I'm gone. So they were with Jesus. So yes, we some things come with fasting and praying, but we have to remember that at that time they didn't have to fast. Exactly. It's in the word. They were so with if him. he's saying that some things only come by fasting and praying, he's pretty much saying you gotta let your flesh die. Come on. Your belief is in your flesh. And so the pandemic started not from the man, mm -mm. but from the disciples that couldn't do it. Ooh. See? The pandemic started with the disciples. It didn't start with the man. They passed that unbelief on to him when they could not do what he needed done. Because if they had believed the power that they were given, because they were given power and authority. Right. The Bible says to cast out all demons. Oh. It says every evil spirit to heal from every type of sickness. They were given the power that Jesus had. And that power was faith because it wasn't Holy Spirit yet. Right. Jesus gave them the power of faith. The Holy Spirit did not activate or come present until Jesus. Right. And then it came on Pentecost. So he gave them the power of faith. And they never used it. And that that's so interesting you say that because when I was thinking about unbelief, the first thing that came to the point was we can we can we can say scriptures about faith. We can go and talk about how Abraham, you know, and Sarah, we can talk about that stuff. But yes, those are receipts of faith. Come on, receipts. But here, 
when your belief has to be founded in God uh-huh. and that he is who he says he is. Uh-huh. Period. Uh-huh. That's it. So if I'm a disciple, which I am a disciple, but anyways. Come on. Um, I'm going to believe that I have the power and authority yeah. because my yeah. master has left me here and he wouldn't leave me here if he didn't know that I didn't have the power to handle what comes before me. Because he knew he already gave it to them. But we sit there and we look at it and we're like, oh, no, that can't be me. Oh, no, no. Because you have the wrong people in your ear. Thank you. You're surrounded around the wrong people. That's key. That's why this is called an unbelief pandemic. Because your surroundings can cause you to not believe. believe. When God gave me that revelation that the pandemic started with the disciples because they did not operate in what they were given. They were given the power of faith. And it upset Jesus. And that's why he said, how much longer do I have to be with you all? How much longer? What else I got to do to show you guys? What faith can do. How much longer? How much longer? They started this pandemic because the man came as a believer. Right. He came. He would have never brought his son if he didn't believe Jesus could do it. He came as an unbeliever. Yeah. yeah. But when he got in the presence of unbelievers. Right. Was when he had unbelief. This is why he could say, I believe. But help me overcome my oh, my unbelief. Help me overcome me not believing. Because I actually believe. Unbelief had just set in. Jesus. And confirm what the scribes were trying to tell everybody. Oh, okay then. So now the devil has leverage. Now the devil has fuel. Now the devil has the opportunity to say, I tell you, Jesus ain't got no power. Look at his boys. Look at his uh-huh. home boys. I tell you, Jesus. Jesus right. I, I try to tell y'all. Y'all sitting up there. Y'all, y'all better follow this law. Y'all, y- y'all better follow right. what, what Moses commit these laws was. Y'all better follow this. And it wasn't that Jesus was telling them not to follow. It was just Jesus was telling them and showing them a new way to fulfill it. They had to have the faith to say the reason why faith is is so rooted in the word of God. Is because it takes faith to operate in the Holy Spirit. Because you've got to believe that there is a greater power within you, moving you, leading you, operating, doing what it is. You've got to have faith to believe that there is a higher, greater power in you that will protect you, guard you when God is telling you to do what he said. You've got to have that type of belief. It takes faith to believe. Yeah. Yeah. That God is even real. So Ooh. this is why he operated in faith first before Holy Spirit. Because I needed you to have faith. Because if you have faith, you will believe in the spirit that I'm going to sin. You Ooh. will actually have faith to say, yeah, dwell in me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You will actually say, I follow the faith. I follow the spirit. I follow God. You got to have faith to do that. This is why they got the power of faith first. This is why Jesus always asked everybody before he healed them. Do you believe? Yeah. Because this ain't going to work unless you believe. Right. You might be, you might feel healed in the house and then you walk outside the house. Stop. And, 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 and you hurt. Stop. Because you believed under the glory and the power. Oh, but girl, the power can't oh, just be Jesus. for a time. It has to be all the time. Girl, you got me quick in here and out there. Oh, you saying something powerful right there. That's powerful, Tanisha. Because you under the glory. How many people get a high? That's what that's called. I got a high under the glory. I got a high. I got a feeling. And so I feel it here. But if you carry the Holy Spirit with you, baby, that high will go with you. That high will go everywhere you go. That high will be when you in certain rooms. That high will go however you want to go. That high will happen. Yeah. But it takes you having a belief system. Listen, y'all, this is this, this is so powerful. Mm-hmm. This is so good. And I know we, we are winding down. We, we, we at the end. We, we at the end of this. But this has to continue. We're going to do a part two of 
unbelief pandemic. That's how because he does us. He do us like this. He messes us up. And we might have some friends next time yeah. on this one because I believe this one is powerful. I believe we've got to break this pandemic. We've yeah. got to shut this pandemic down. We need people believing and we need people believing in the foundation of faith so that you can follow God in all things and everything. Yeah. If we get the foundation of faith back into the body of Christ, like it's supposed to be, people wouldn't operate the way they operate. People wouldn't act the way they act because they would now become like in a place of fear, reverencing God yeah. that they won't want to yeah. do wrong, that they won't want to mess up Ooh. because now they got faith to believe what the word said. And the word said, if I sin, death comes after. If I mess up, there's consequences. Like yeah. if people would really operate in faith, they would not do the stuff that they're doing in the body of Christ. They wouldn't be this is to. why there is a pandemic of unbelief because people don't even believe in the word no more. People don't even believe in the Bible no more. And this is what's happening. Y'all, we're going to continue this. We're going to continue this. We're going to continue this because this is getting real good yeah. and good, 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 <laughs> and getting heated up. And I am just, I really want to break this pandemic. Yeah. I want to break this pandemic. We've got to stop the widespread of unbelief yeah. and cause a widespread of belief. Yeah. We need to help people get Believe rid of their again. unbelief. They've yeah. got to believe again. They've got to believe again. They've got to believe again. Hope. They need hope. And that's what we believe we're painting. So I am so excited about what God is getting ready to yeah. do in your life. But it takes you to believe. Yeah. I'm excited about this next for your life. I'm excited about everything that God already had planned for your life that you're getting ready to walk in now because your belief system is coming up. Yeah. We're going to help you establish a belief system. We're going to help you be foundationalized in the word of God like you're supposed to. So stay tuned for the next episode. There's a part two Got to me. the unbelief pandemic. Listen, thank you guys for joining Blank Canvas Podcast today. Yeah, We pray that this has already started to fuel up the fire of belief in your belly. And that you will begin to go into prayer and ask God, if there's any unbelief, yeah. take it out of me. Jesus. So that you can see all of what God said concerning your life. Yeah. There is more. more. Yeah. There is more. Yes. But it requires your faith. Yes, Lord. We'll see you guys in the next two weeks. God bless. Woo. Hi guys, I'm so excited that you were able to tune into this podcast today. Listen, I am Apostle Prophetess Kadesh and I am praying that every one of these podcasts change your life. Blank Canvas is just to show you exactly how God wants you to see it. And so I pray that every time you watch a Blank Canvas podcast, that your mindset is renewed, your heart is shifted so that you can get a new set of eyes to see the paintings that God is painting for you to see. Your perception and how you perceive things will change the more you continue to see it in the eyesight of God. So I'm so glad again that you were able to watch Blank Canvas Podcast today. Listen, if you have not subscribed, make sure you subscribe so that you can get all the notifications of all of the Blank Canvas Podcasts when they come out and when they are aired. This is going to be a life-changing podcast, so I just don't want you to get it, but I want your whole family and everybody you know to get it as well. So make sure you are sharing these podcasts. Make sure you're giving it to everybody you know needs a perspective change and I would like to ask if any of you find it in your heart when you watch this blank podcast because it takes finances prayers support to continue to push forth in all that God has called me to do if you would like to sow, please you can go to my website at www.kadeshjenkins.com or my cash app at dollar sign Kadesha Jenkins men to make sure that you are sowing and also sowing your prayers, your support, and your shares. Thank you again for watching Blank Canvas Podcast. 
Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss when they are aired because I know that this podcast will paint many pictures of how God wants you to see it. I thank you again for joining and watching the Blank Canvas Podcast. God bless.